Hello, so in this section, we're going to take a look at automating some basic tasks and see how you might be able to use this uh, for a competition environment. Um, so let's take a look and see what I got set up here. So um, what I've currently deployed for myself is uh, just a mini hack. And really all that I'm going to need is ma mainly one virtual machine for now. But we'll see as we branch out over the course of this exercise. I'm just going to end up using two. So again, the IP addresses, they, they don't really matter what your IP address is currently configured. And from the basic mini hack topology, what I'm really going to be focusing on actually is the two internal machines. Now, again, what I'm emphasizing, the things I'm showing, you could do across any of the machines, and you really would want to stop and think, after you've seen some of this automation, like, where would I want to use this in my overall network topology? But for now, I'm focusing on the internal one. So I've got the internal Kali, as well as my internal web server, this orange one. Um, and uh, remember, that's my Ubuntu machine. So if, you, if I kind of cheat and look in the back here, these are the machines I'm going to be focusing on. And the only thing that I've done on these machines so far is just configured the networking, right? So you can check back to a previous video if you don't remember how to configure networking in Kali or networking in Ubuntu. But I can see here that I've configured my IP address, in this case, to be 192.168.195.100, just to follow my topology on the internal side. And then on the Ubuntu, I've got it to be 192.168.195.2. Okay, so I'm 195.100 and 195.2 on these two particular machines. And it, like I said, they're, they're kind of arbitrary, but they just they need to be able to see each other for some of the things I'm going to take a look at here at the end of this, this little automation section. So, okay, um, I think just because I, I need to pick one here arbitrarily, I think I'll pick one uh, such as the web server. So this Ubuntu machine, according to my topology, in, in, in relationship to a competition, would be something that could be a, val a validly scored service. All right, so I've got something like my web server. This could be getting me points, okay? So that's where I'm going to take a look at this, and I'll use that as the context for um, kind of the, the way I'm going to show some of this stuff. So we'll just focus on this one for now, but when it becomes relevant, we'll start taking a look at the other internal Kali machine as well, okay? Okay, so the, the thing that I want to emphasize here today is um, how can I start taking a look at some internal automation and how it could relate to backups as well? All right, and so from, from the first start, I want us to start thinking about, okay, you've spent a lot of work at the competition, you've, you've been working on your server, which has been scoring your points. Obviously, one of our most fundamental cybersecurity ideas is, do you have a backup? Are you able not just to protect yourself against attacks, but also be able to respond and to recover from attacks? And of course, that's really where the backups come into play. And so what I'd like to explore here is what's a good utility and some good commands that you could use throughout a competition or in a, in a more professional environment that can help you accomplish some of these tasks. Um, and uh, the main command that I want to take a look at here is a really, really common Linux utility that we often use for backups and copying files, which is the rsync utility. So on most computers, uh, most Linux computers, if you just type rsync and hit enter, you should hopefully see like you'll get a whole bunch of options. It'll say, hey, here's all the different ways that you could possibly use this backup utility. But it's a nice little way just to confirm that it is indeed installed. Um, because uh, it, you might happen to be on some strange distribution that it doesn't come with. Um, and so you might have to download and install our sync. But that's what I'm going to take a look at here today. Um, the other nice thing about our sync, when you just type this out, you can really start to get in a feeling here for uh, for how many different options and little tweaks can you do when you're doing things like backups. Um, and so this is a, a something I'd like us to just kind of keep in mind and keep in context that there is a whole bunch of different options and functionality off of this rsync utility. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not pretending to go over every little piece and every little part of this, um, but at least let's uh, see some of the common options that you might want to use and how we can use them uh, uh, in the environment that we've got set up here. So, okay, so let's just first locally see what would it be like to have some stuff and then use this rsync utility to, to back them up and all that. So uh, what I have right now, of course, is kind of just a blank machine. And so I'm going to need some files just as example files. So I happen to be on my desktop right now. If I just kind of confirm where I'm operating, slash home, slash sandbox, slash desktop, that's where I currently am logged in. And th this is as good a place as any, but you can start to use your imagination and use other places if you want to use other files for this. But like I said, I'm going to need some files. I'm going to need some stuff. All right, so maybe I'll make a folder here of just like stuff. M-K-A-D-I-R space stuff. I'll have a stuff folder. And inside my stuff folder, I'll make a couple simple files, like a practice file one, a practice file two. And maybe I'll just use the touch command for this, right? Like touch, practice, or I'm going to put this in stuff slash practice, practice one. Um, and I'll make a uh, stuff slash 
practice two, right? Something like that. So I'm just putting a couple simple files in there. So if I cheat and double click on it, it's like, okay, I've got some directory and it has some things inside it. And that's the stuff that I care about, right? So that those are the things that maybe I want to protect and back up and keep copies of, etc. Um, I'm also going to have another directory since we're talking about doing backups of, okay, there's the stuff maybe I want to back up. Now, where do I want to back it up to? So maybe I'll make a folder called like backups, you know, secure backups, something like that. My, my super secret backups, whatever. I'll just make a folder here called backups as well. So we can start to get the idea that, okay, great. I've got two different directories and that's going to be the idea. One has some files in it. One is my backup location. And how can I use our sync to be able to, uh, you know, accomplish my task? Okay. So let's take a look at one of the first basic functionalities and first usage examples of our sync um, and see, see how we can go ahead and do this. Um, so uh, the, some of the basic options that I like to start with as we're using the R sync utility, again, you saw there was that big long list of potential options. So let's, slowly start to build out and see some of the nuances here of how this actually works. Um, some of the common options that you're, uh, I like to do when I want to start is a dash AV option. Um, and what this will do is this will allow us to copy some information uh, from one location to another. Um, but uh, when we tack on that V, it allows us to get a verbose output. And so now when our sync is doing things, it actually kind of is a little bit more wordy and tells you what it's actually doing. So it is a good way to kind of check, like, is my backup actually working? What did you actually do in the backup process? You know, sometimes you just run a command and you sit there and it just says, okay, I'm done. And it never really told you what happened. So I do like tossing this on. Um, one of the next options I want us to see, at least to start, is the dash dash delete option as well. Um, and this is one we're going to mess around with here in just a little bit. And you'll see why, why would I want to use this one or why would I not want to use this one? Um, but anyways, these are some, I think, some good basic options to start with. Um, and when you're not quite sure what you want to do, maybe you want to start here. Um, and then the idea is very similar to the copy command. You would say, what's the location that you want to back up space? Where do you want to back it up to? And so I could have something like, well, I want to back up my stuff directory space and I want to put it in my backups directory, something like that. All right. And this is, I think, a good example to start with. And let, let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens. OK. And so you'll see because I tossed on the V option, it now gives me a little bit of information here as to say, like, well, what the heck happens? And you can see our sync went and said, OK, we found this particular folder called stuff. Here was the things inside it. There was a practice one. There was a practice two. We went and transferred the information over. OK, great. And then we finished. And so did it actually work? Like, can we take a look inside our backups and see? Like, oh, yeah, there's the files. They got copied over to our backups location. And so this is a nice way you get information about what was actually copied and it tells you how long it took and all that. So nice little commands to be able to accomplish tasks like this. Um, now, let's start to see here, too, because um, I, I always am thinking like in the back of my head, someone could be like, yeah, James, uh, you know, why, why didn't we just use the copy command? Right. Like copy could have done that as well. And it could have copied everything inside the folder. And it's like, well, yeah, that, that is true. Um, but now let's see what happens if we make a change. All right. Using what I've done so far, what if I go into one of those practice one files, let's say, and start typing some information and I make some changes to the file. OK, so how about I give that a try? I'll like echo out some information like James was here and I'll send that to uh, my stuff slash practice one file. All right, so now one of my files has actually been modified and it has some information inside it, but the other one was untouched. All right, and now let's see what happens if I run this backup command again. And this is where hopefully you can start to really appreciate the advantage of doing something like our sync over the copy command, okay? Because we, when we run this command again, you'll see, well, it, it actually was smart enough to notice changes were made to one of the files, but changes were not made to one of the other files. And so the practice one file was sent again, but practice two was untouched. And so this is a big difference when we're dealing with our sync as opposed to copy, because copy would just try to blindly copy everything that's in the file or everything that's in the folder location. And so when you have uh, uh, examples like this on servers where you're trying to back up perhaps hundreds or thousands or you know gigabytes of data and sending it from your server to some other location, 
uh, only transferring the files that actually have changed, sometimes that, that can be a massive increase in efficiency. So then your command will execute and only transfer the data significantly faster. And so that's, a, I think, a really big difference as to why you would want to start learning and getting used to some rsync commands that are appropriate for the environment that you might be working in. And something like this uh, is definitely a good example of that. So like if we, if we try to cat that out, we'll be able to see right, the backups slash practice one, I could cat that out and say, oh yeah, that does indeed uh, have the, the new information now inside it. So definitely a good good little trick here to know about and to be able to copy this information over. Um, okay, so what, what if I actually deleted one of my files though? All right, I've got that empty practice two file that's currently in my stuff. How will this rsync command behave if I were to delete one of my originals? All right, so let's give it a try. So I'll do an rm of stuff slash practice two, the one that's empty, the one that doesn't have anything inside it, but nevertheless, the file does exist. If I delete that file from my original place, and now I run my rsync command again, what's going to happen with this? And you'll see that it does actually go through and notice because I have this dash dash delete option, it will enforce consistency from your original location to your backup location. And so in this particular case, my backup command actually is trying to ensure that the backup's location remains the same as stuff. And so it, it actually went through and it deleted my practice two file out of the backups, right? If I do an LS of my backups right now, you see it, well, it just has the practice one file. And now the big question becomes, is this appropriate or not, right? Is this actually what you want? So I toss this option on so we can see the functionality of it because sometimes you do want to maintain consistency between two different locations. Um, the advantage with doing this, of course, is now I've got a backups location that is identical to whatever my live real world environment location might be. The downside, of course, to having this delete option is, well, what if somebody deleted something on accident? and they didn't actually mean to delete it, and then they come crying to you to say, ah, oh, James, please, can you please recover my files? I accidentally deleted my hard drive. I don't know what's happening, you know? And if you had a, a situation where you were enforcing consistency, then obviously backups like this would, uh, uh, your backup would, would actually have the information removed from it. Um, now, uh, the, the, the knee-jerk reaction then many times is to say, well, James, uh, I'll just get rid of this delete option. Right. And so whenever you do something like this, yeah, you could run your backup command like this. And now you'll be able to go and transfer whatever information you need to to your backup location. But realize as files get created and then removed, if you don't have the dash dash delete option, what's going to happen to your backup location? It's just going to keep building up with more and more and more and more stuff. So if you're in an environment that storage uh, uh, space is not really an option, then you might have the luxury of being able to do that, where you could just back up things all day for weeks on end and, and not really have a problem with it. Um, oftentimes when you're dealing with servers, though, uh, sooner or later, quantity of data is going to catch up with you. Um, and so that's something that you're just you're going to want to be a little bit more intelligent about and stop and think it's not just about what's happening today. It's what What's going to happen to the storage space in my server over the course of weeks, over the course of months or even years? Like you're going to have to put a little bit of thought into that. And so sometimes you might have some type of consistency option that you run on a regular basis, maybe on the weekends or maybe every day, something like that. Um, but then maybe you're doing more of a full backup that's not actually deleted. You actually are taking true snapshots in time that you save over time. But maybe you're doing those just on a little bit of a less regular basis. So like I said, you have to come up with a strategy that kind of mad or is kind of a, a specific for whatever environment you find yourself in. So that's a good thing to kind of realize of why would I want to do one option as opposed to another? But nevertheless, both of these are, are good options to being able to back things up, whether you're enforcing consistency or whether you're just accruing all the files and all the changes that have happened. Um, learning how to use rsync is definitely a really powerful thing.